and welcome to MorningEncouragement.com. My name is Glenn Siepert, and it is super awesome to be starting off your day with you and to help you kick this thing off in the right direction. So if this is your very first time to MorningEncouragement.com, this is my blog. This is what I do. Uh, I post two entries a week, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, a video like today on Saturday. Uh, Monday mornings, I send out a newsletter type-ish, thing-ish uh, out to my subscribers. And it's just, you know, like an encouraging word to help you get your, your week started off on, on the right foot. Uh, basically, the objective of MorningEncouragement.com is to encourage you, to inspire you, to uplift you, and most importantly, to help you walk forward in your walk with God. And sometimes that means being super encouraging. Sometimes it means being a little bit challenging and kind of helping us dig into the tougher things of of life and kind of pick up uh, the heavy stuff and do what we've got to do to to follow God. Because, you know, sometimes following God is not easy. Sometimes following God is hard. Sometimes following God requires us to make difficult decisions. So this is just a place where we can all come together and figure out life together. You know, you can find Morning Encouragement on on the interwebs. You can search morningencouragement.com. If you have an iPhone, you could also go to the Apple App Store and you can search Morning Encouragement. You can download the app and it's basically all Morning Encouragement stuff all in one place. All the posts, the the blogs, the vlogs, the podcast, the whole nine yards. You can go to the podcast app. Also, you can search Morning Encouragement. It will pop up there. We're on Vimeo. We're on YouTube. We're on SoundCloud, bro. We are all over the place encouraging everyone. So today, I want to talk to you about the idea of looking foolish. And I want to ask you, are you willing to look foolish? Are you willing to look foolish? Foolish. I want to suggest to you that it is next to impossible to do anything of lasting significance in this life without willing to look foolish. Now, significance. Okay, when I say it's impossible to do anything of lasting significance, I'm saying that it's impossible. It is next to impossible to do anything that's going to make a lasting difference in this world and it's going to outlive you well beyond your life. It's impossible to do something like that if you're not willing to look foolish. I think about I think about a guy like Steve Jobs, right? Now I work at an Apple retail store and so uh, Steve Jobs' name comes up a lot and customers always ask about Steve and you know, did you ever meet Steve Jobs and you know, all that kind of stuff. Steve Jobs, I got his biography over there on my on my shelf. This dude started Apple computers in his garage. I mean, talk about looking like an idiot, right? I mean, hey, I love Apple. I love Steve. I think he did a fantastic job. But just think about this for a second, right? Like start like building computers in your garage. Could you imagine what this dude's neighbors must have thought when they first realized that this guy is trying to build computers in his garage, right? But but look what he did, right? He built computers in his garage and then he kept building and building and building and building this thing. And now today it's it's outlived him. It's going to way outlive him. And, and it's a multi-bazillion dollar company all started in his garage. Uh, people thought he was crazy. He wore he wore sandals. His his jeans were all ripped. He smelled funny. He was he was like a hippie. People laughed at this guy. People thought this guy was a joke. But look what he did, right? Think about think about people in the Bible. Think about people like uh, Noah, for instance. Could you imagine being Noah's neighbor? Hey hey Noah, what what are you doing? What's with all the wood? What what's with all the tools? And he's like, oh yeah, I heard from God last night, and uh, God told me that I should build this this boat and he's going to make it rain for 40 days and 40 nights and 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 you're going to die and the smiths down the street they're going to die but uh, my family's going to live and we're going to invite two of every animal on the planet to come and, and go into our boat and uh it's going to rain everybody's going to die it's going to stop raining the boat will come down and we're going to repopulate the earth no you've been drinking bro right i mean they must have thought this guy was crazy but he listened to god uh he did what god told him to do Think about think about Jesus. Right? Here's Jesus, the Son of God, left heaven, came to earth. People laughed at him, they mocked him, 
They spit on him. The Pharisees, the church leaders, said that he was the devil. But he went through. He lived his life. He lived a sinless life, nailed to a cross, died, rose again, and offered salvation and a relationship with God to all of humanity, to anybody who would have faith in him. Right? These are people who were willing to look foolish, but God used that. He met them in that foolishness, and he changed the world, literally changed the world. Um, I think about my own self. Um, an example for, for me and for my wife, we started a church in our garage a few years ago. Uh, we called it Unveiled Church. We got we got these people together. Man, we put together this vision, these core values. And we're like, oh, we're going to go out. We're going to change the world. And we had these big, audacious, like ridiculous dreams about what we were going to do. And, and today, like two and a half, three years later, that church doesn't meet anymore. It hasn't met for, for a couple of years. Uh, it didn't turn out at all like we thought it was going to. We looked like complete idiots to the world around us. Even some of the people in our church who thought we were crazy, right, for wanting to do this, for, for stepping out and doing this. And when it didn't work and, and it crashed and, and, and burned, it didn't really go the direction that we thought it was going to go. People thought we were crazy. But God met us in that craziness. God met us in that foolishness. In the time that we were in that garage doing the things that we were doing, uh, God used it to change people's lives. Okay, 16 people, 16 people either put their faith in Christ or rededicated their lives to Him. We saw people walk through that garage who had sworn that they would never, ever, ever step foot in a church because they were afraid the thing would fall down on them. I had one guy at one time after church took me outside, hugged me with tears in his eyes. Said, I've never experienced this before. I don't know what I'm feeling right now. I said, that's God that you're feeling right now. He's like, I didn't realize he was real, right? People met God. I mean, it was a cold, it's a two-car garage, two-car garage. In the winter, it was so cold, we brought in like eight portable heaters and we shorted the place out because we had too many things plugged in. Uh, we, we got those those hand warmers that you put in your gloves and we put them in people's shoes so their feet wouldn't be too cold on the cement, right? We look like idiots out there. But God met us in that. Uh, we we went uh, one Easter, we purchased 100 copies of Pastor Stephen Furtick's uh, Crash the Chatterbox. It's a book about uh, crashing that, that negative voice in, in your head and hearing the voice of God above all other voices in our lives. So, so we got a hundred copies of this book and, and we wrapped it up in, in this green wrapping paper and we hid the books all over the community, all over the place. And we just wrote a card on there and we said, hey, uh, we're on Veil Church. We love you. We're praying for you. And we hope that this Easter uh, you're able to crash uh, the negative voices that are in your head. And we hope that this book is a tool to help you move forward in your life and in your walk with God. And we had like three or four people respond on our website. So out of 100 people, only four responded. But it was great because those four people uh, got this book. They were excited about it. And I think that they met God in a, in a unique and, and a powerful way. Another time uh, during Christmas, we had baked like hundreds of cookies. And we wrapped them up in these individual packets. And we hand wrote uh, Christmas cards. We went to Eva's Village in Patterson and we handed out these cookies and these Christmas cards and we stood by as we watched these people, some of them homeless, living on the street. This one guy opened up one of the cards that we gave him and he started just crying because he was so overwhelmed with joy that somebody took the time to write, hand write a Christmas card for him, right? God did these incredible things. Those are just a couple examples, but he did great things. Uh, in those two years that we were in that garage because we were willing to look like idiots. I'm going to ask you this morning, what in your life are you not doing that you should be doing, but you're not doing it because you're too afraid of looking like an idiot? You see, we live in this world where we've got to have everything perfect. Right? I got my Instagram and, and, and I, I take my photos and I pick the perfect filter and I, I got I to gotta rearrange my, my desk. Uh, you know, the other, <laughs> this is funny, this mug right here is, is not really on my desk. It's actually sitting on a whole bunch of, of books, but I put it there so that you're able to see it 
in the, in in the video, and that's that's silly, right? But I, I made it because I wanted this to be to be perfect, so that that you can you can see the mug, and I don't want it too far over here because then it's out. I gotta have it like right there next to the. We want everything to be to be perfect, but it's not just like that with our pictures. It's also like that with our lives, and because we want everybody to think to look at our lives and see this perfection, we're afraid to step into things that we know that we can't master right away. So rather than step out in faith and being willing to look like an idiot and trusting that God is going to meet us in that foolishness, we sit off on the sidelines and we kind of just watch while everybody else does whatever it is that, that we're not doing. And I want to suggest to you this morning that, again, the only way to do something that's going to make a lasting impact, uh, a significant impact in this life and in this world, is if you're willing to step out and look like an idiot, look like a fool to the people around you. Because God can and will meet you in the midst of that foolishness. He will do something incredible in your life. I'm not saying that you're going to be the next Steve Jobs. I'm not saying that you're going to be the next Noah. I'm not saying that you're the Messiah. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying that God has a history of meeting people when they step out in faith. He has a habit of meeting those people and empowering them and pushing them forward to do something in them and through them to make a lasting difference in this world and in the lives around them. So give it a shot today. Whatever it is that, that you're not sure, maybe I don't think I could do this. I don't think I, I, I don't think I would be good at it. I don't, I don't know if it would work. Just do it, right? Stop holding back. If you want to start that company, if you want to fill out the application to get that job, if you want to fill out the, the thing, the application to go back to school, but you're too afraid, just do it. Just fill it out. Just get up and do it and trust that God is going to meet you there. It might not go the way that you thought, like our church. We thought that we would be doing huge things by now. We're not doing anything with it right now, right? And so it might not turn out the way that you think or that you want it to turn out, but that doesn't mean that God isn't going to use it to do something great in you and through you. Let me pray for you. Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the people who are listening to this. God, I thank you for the dreams the audacious, even ridiculous dreams that you have instilled deep in their hearts. God, would you give them the faith to, to step forward? Would you give them the, the courage to step into those dreams? And God, would you meet them in their foolishness? When the world around them looks at them and points their finger at them and laughs at them because they don't think that they can do it, they don't think that they can measure up to, to do this thing that you have called them to do, God, would you meet them in the midst of that finger pointing? Would you meet them in the midst of that foolishness? Would you take them by the hand and would you lead them forward into whatever it is that you have for their lives? God, I thank you for them. I thank you for their faith. I thank you for their dreams. Would you bless them and would you walk with them today? And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Have a good day, guys.